I think that today's update for The Sims 4 might be one of the biggest ones that we've ever gotten. Okay, so we're getting curved walls, body hair, sexuality settings and cast, they changed the phone UI, they've added wants and fears into the base game. There's like a new flooring and a ton of bug fixes. I mean, this patch is huge. I will say I actually had a chance to play with this patch like a few weeks ago and I made a video talking about all the things that are coming in it, but that was just me guessing. I had early access to the high school pack and with it I had the patch early and so I kind of was just like exploring stuff and writing things down that I noticed were new as I was going. But as of today we actually have the patch notes so I can see a real list of all the new things. And obviously I probably missed some stuff when I made that video because I was just guessing. This patch is full of stuff we've been asking for for literally years, like body hair, wants and fears, sexuality, are all huge requests in the Sims community. And then with the curved walls, like, I love the idea, don't get me wrong, but I didn't even know I wanted that. I guess I just kind of thought it was impossible until all of a sudden we had it in the game, and now I am so excited about it. So I've got the patch notes pulled up here, and I will link this down below if you want to read this whole thing yourself, but basically, we've got a lot of things to go over. Number one, the phone has a new OS update. So you might remember, the phone used to be just like a big long list of text, but now it's got like apps on it, <laughs> so you can click on little icons and then it opens up a list. I think this looks so much better. I feel like this is gonna be a lot easier to see and figure out as well. Like finding this travel icon, it's bigger, it's more obvious. This is just gonna be a lot more user-friendly. And honestly, it's just more modern, like it kind of makes more sense in 2022 than the list did. And also it's kind of customizable, like you can pick the different colors of backgrounds, you can mute it, you can change the phone case they have on the exterior of their phone. I kind of forget that those customization options exist, but it's kind of a fun feature. Obviously, we also have body hair added into the base game. So now in cast, when you click on your sim and you go into the body section, you'll see a bunch of different body hair options. There's arm hair, we've got torso hair, back hair, and leg hair. We've got the same options for body hair for masculine and feminine frame sims from like teenage up, so kids don't have body hair and toddlers don't either, and obviously babies don't because they're you know, an object. But everybody else has all the same body hair options, and it works just like regular hair, like you can pick a color or you can have it match your Sims regular hair. I honestly can't believe they finally added it to The Sims 4. This is just one of those things that I was kind of giving up hope on. Like, it had been so long with no body hair that I was kind of like, oh, well, we'll never get it now. We've known this was coming for kind of a while because after Werewolves came out, there was obviously a lot of talk like, um, are we gonna get body hair in this pack? And then The Sims team was like, not right now, but soon, kind of like teasing a little bit. And so body hair has now come out in between Werewolves and High School. And honestly, I feel like that kind of makes sense. If you buy the High School pack, they're gonna kind of have like puberty related gameplay involved. And with the High School pack, the body hair can actually grow. Like where this match hair button is, there's also like a enabled body hair growth, like, checkbox. And also the high school pack has a couple other options. I think the high school pack has a couple more, like, chest and, like, hair lengths and stuff, but everybody gets these options in the base game. So by default, every sim has these settings. It's kind of just the same as it's always been in the sims, how they're just attracted to everybody, basically. So yes, they're exploring romantically, and they're interested in woohoo with everyone. This exploring romantically thing, if you click no, it'll prompt the sim to reject any sims that don't fit their attraction type. And that's a yes or no, but the other options are tick boxes. So you can pick one, you can pick none, you can pick both of them. A sexuality update like this has been a huge request from the sims community for like many, many years. So it's pretty cool to see it finally being added. I will say that I found it a little bit jarring to have seen them do all this work to make the game less binary and then have this update come out with like men and women tick boxes. I get that it's kind of like an unfortunate nature of The Sims 4, like the game is built on men and women and they're kind of trying to go back and undo all of that now, but it just sucks to see those labels being put here. They made this blog post last week addressing all of that, so I'm gonna link it down below, and I will say that reading this made me feel really, really good about all of it, and they even flat out answered that question in the post, which I really appreciated. They said, The Sims 4 is eight years old at this point and reliant on systems that were originally architected with a gender binary in mind. In the intervening years, we've taken important steps such as gender customization, pronouns, and now sexual orientation. It's a journey still in progress with many more steps to go. Proper mechanical systems to fully support non-binary sims is another step in that journey. So basically they're saying, hey, we know we have this issue with our game, we totally agree with you and we're working on fixing it, but in the meantime, we still wanted to give you this update, like, as it's a work in progress. And I really appreciate them coming out and saying that from the get-go. Another part of this that I really appreciated was the very last question. 
can I turn this feature off? And they said, no. While we try to give players the option to toggle certain gameplay features, LGBTQIA plus identities are a fact of life and not a toggle to be switched on and off. I think this whole blog post was really well said. So like I mentioned, I'll link it down below for you to read yourself. But overall, I think this update is super cool. And I know a lot of you are gonna be really, really excited about this one. And we're still not done yet, by the way. This update also has wants and fears. So these things down here have replaced whims and these are where the wants and fears will go. And the wants kind of work just like whims where your sim has like a wish to do something. Currently mine wants to be mean to a child, so that's lovely. But now they can also get fears. And I will say they don't just like pop up randomly. They usually have to do a little bit with gameplay. This is a screenshot of all of my Sims fears when I was playing with the high school pack. I will say, I don't think you're supposed to have this many. I was just doing a bad job of helping her get over them. But through my gameplay, I got a fear of crowded places, a fear of failing tests, a fear of being judged. At one point, my Sim had a fear of being cheated on. I had an elder Sim that had a fear of dying, which was almost a little bit too real. I also had a fear of fire pop up. So I think I might do a little bit of cooking and see if I can force that one to show up. Let's see, cursed, grody, volcanic activity, filthy, creepy crawlies, gremlins. I don't know. Just bad luck, please. And now if you could come cook maybe some eggs and toast. She's uncomfortable, so that might help too. Come on, start a fire, start a fire, start a fire, start. There we go. <laughs> that was easy, actually. Am I afraid? Why are you not afraid? Literally, how are you not scared? That was terrifying. Oh my god. Well, when they get a fear, it pops up like over here in this area, and instead of it being like round and cloud-like, it's kind of pointy, spiky, and they'll get the fear there, and they'll also have a temporary trait appear of that fear. I wish that we had a proper list of these, but I guess we're kind of gonna have to just discover them through gameplay, and I can just tell you what I've seen so far. Overall, I love the idea of this so much. I think it's super cool to have like scary things in your Sims' lives actually affect them a little bit more, because realistically, if you were in like a devastating fire, you probably probably would have a fear of fire pop up, right? So it's just kind of cool to have those things have more of a lasting impact on your sim. And in my gameplay, you can get rid of the fears. Like when I had that sim have the fear of being cheated on, I had the option to talk to her girlfriend about it and like talk over my fear. And then when I did that, the fear went away. So you're not like permanently stuck with them, right? They're more temporary. Although I guess if you never did anything to help them, you probably could have them be permanent if you so desired. We're still not done yet, by the way. We also have curved walls added to the base game in this update. So these curved walls work a lot like the curved fences and curved platforms and stuff where you basically place a room, but now it's like actually a room with a curved wall attached to it. I'm telling you, this is probably one of the most shocking updates The Sims 4 has ever gotten, at least for me. I just never thought we would get something like this. I think this is so cool and it is so unexpected. I wanna emphasize how much work would have gone into like making this function because The Sims 4 is not curved. The whole thing works on a grid. So think about this, right? Everything in the game is made for flat walls. All of the windows are made to fit on flat walls. So when I put this flat window on a curved wall, what happens, right? That is certainly a very difficult question to figure out. And not just that, but there's three different sizes of curved walls. And obviously all of these different sizes are like different amounts of curve. These ones being the most curved, these ones being closest to being flat. So if you look right here, there's like three new categories of windows, right? There's the ones that fit on flat walls, which is, you know, everything. There's the ones that fit on like the slightly curved walls, I guess the like bigger curves, I should say. And actually I'm kind of impressed to see this because I had only seen the base game ones. So it's fun to see like the other pack windows that fit on these. For the most part, they're like the one tile wide ones, the smaller windows. And then we have this third tab that fits on all the curved walls, like the tiniest curved walls. And unfortunately not many windows fit on this curve yet because again, it is like the biggest curve. But interestingly, it seems that we've got this window from Eco Lifestyle and also this window from Discover University, which is surprising to me, but I'm not mad. You can just kind of see though, like how the window is obviously supposed to be flat. And then when you put it on the curve, it's it's kind of weird. I'm sure there's still some bugs they're trying to work out with this. And obviously in the future, we'll probably get more windows that fit on more kinds of walls. But for now, 
This is pretty impressive. It works the same way with doors, right? Like some of the doors fit, some of them don't. And interestingly, a decent amount of doors, even from packs, fit on those really curved walls. And even pet doors fit on those tiny curved walls. I'm kind of excited about that. There's definitely going to be a learning curve with this. Emphasis on the curve part. Because this is sort of a weird tool that not many of us are very sure how to use. I think I might even try and do some curved wall building on my Twitch channel tonight. So I'll link my stream down below if you want to come hang out with us but we'll be experimenting together, that's for sure. And I also made a video already, like a couple days ago, where I tried to build with curve walls when I had the update a few weeks ago, so I'll link that down below for you too. And we have this new floor. This is the other build mode thing. I will gladly accept any new base game flooring you want to give me. They didn't even list that in the patch notes, so... Who knows? They also did a lot of bug fixes in this patch, like the list is kind of long, so I'll link this down below if you want to read through the whole thing. Most notably, they finally fixed scooting again, so your sims can like scoot across to a bed in the corner of a room. They could, then they couldn't, then they couldn't again, and it's, but it's back. Apparently it's back again. You can scoot once more. Also, placing a lot from the gallery will default to the right lot type now. This one has been so annoying. So for example, say I had like an empty residential lot and I wanted to download a restaurant off the gallery. By default, it would download as residential and not as a restaurant, even though the lot itself is a restaurant. They fixed it now. So when you download that lot, it'll actually be set as a restaurant and not set as a residential or whatever the original lot was. Did I explain that right? I hope that makes sense. You've probably seen it and it's annoying. So I'm glad to see it's fixed. And you know, like a, a bunch of other stuff. Some of these things are kind of small, like, oh, from Dream Home Decorator, a certain pair of pants is now tagged correctly. Um, and it appears as brown when you select the brown swatch. And the remote control for Murphy beds now has the appropriate texture. I didn't know that was an issue, but it's fixed. And that, my friends, I believe is the entire update. I might have missed some things. Hopefully I didn't. I really tried my best not to. I'm gonna link those patch notes and also that blog post about sexual orientation if you want to go back and read those things for more information. And if you want to see more from this update, I'm gonna link that curve walls build that I did and also the last video I made on the patch when I had early access. And if you want to see even more than that, we're gonna stream tonight on my Twitch. That's twitch.tv forward slash lilsimsy. I'm live literally every day and tomorrow I've got early access I can show you from the pack. So we've got a lot to look forward to this week. Let me know in the comments, what are you most excited excited about from this patch because there is a lot. And with that being said, I'm going to catch you all tomorrow. Okay. Bye everybody. I think for me, the wants and fears are probably my favorite part. I'm just so excited for more gameplay like that. It's going to be so fun.